Here's your wrestling news for November 3rd, 2022. And we're starting off today with AEW as Jeff Jarrett is now part of the company. It was mere months ago that Jarrett was acting as Senior Vice President of WWE Live Events, but after Vince McMahon retired and Triple H gained power, Jarrett lost the role to the road dog Jesse James. On last night's show, Dynamite opened up with a match between Darby Allin and Jay Lethal, which Allin would lose due to interference by someone dressed as Sting. The person was revealed to be Cole Carter, and when Allen got back to his feet, a guitar shot to the head took him down and signaled the arrival of Double J. The multi-time World Heavyweight Champion cut a heel promo on AEW fans and said that Darby won't be able to thrive any longer under the tutelage of Sting. Jarrett's debut this week was a huge deal for AEW, who now have someone with decades of experience both in the ring and working backstage. After his appearance, Tony Khan confirmed on Twitter that Jarrett is All Elite and has been hired as the company's Director of Business Development. Khan added that he's looking forward to expanding the AEW Live Events calendar in 2023 with Jarrett and a team of others, so it seems his role now won't be too different from his recent role in WWE. AEW marks the fourth promotion Jarrett has appeared for this year, which includes WWE, GCW, and the NWA, and he was also a part of Ric Flair's last match. From the sounds of Jarrett's promo, he'll likely be making more appearances on screen, but the new director of business development will also be plenty busy in his work backstage in AEW. But what do you make to Jarrett in AEW? Let us know in the comments below. Now, since becoming the Ring of Honor World Champion, Chris Jericho has claimed to be the greatest champion ever and has proved himself against multiple former champions. During this week's AEW Dynamite, Jericho had an open challenge to any former ROH champion, which was answered by none other than Colt Cabana. A former Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion, this marked Cabana's first appearance on AEW TV since November 24, 2021, where he lost to Brian Danielson on Dynamite. There had been rumors that CM Punk's issues with Cabana had resulted in Colt being removed from AEW, and while Punk had plenty to say about his ex-best friend during the All Out Scrum, there's been no evidence to this claim. As for Cabana, he didn't win against Jericho last night, but his return to TV was still a big deal, and he hopefully won't have to wait another year before his next match on AEW TV. This week's Dynamite saw the return of Colt Cabana, but it also saw a tease for the return of the Elite. In the video segment, the Elite can be seen being replaced with Death Triangle, who won the AEW Trios title after Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks were stripped of the gold. The same video editor also removed Omega and the Bucks from a graphic featuring AEW wrestlers and, sure enough, replaced the three with Death Triangle. It's clear that the Elite will feud with the reigning champions when they're back, but there's no word as to when exactly that'll be. All we can say for certain is that Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks will be back after being cleared by the third-party investigation into All Out, and we imagine the three will be looking to put whatever happened with CM Punk firmly behind them. Back to WWE now as a lot has changed over the past three months, but this hasn't stopped the company from doing business. This week, WWE delivered their 2022 Quarter 3 financial report to investors, and once again, things have been on the up. Revenue is reported to be at $304.6 million, a 19% increase from the previous quarter, while the cost of operating fell to $58.9 million, a decrease of 8%. In their report, WWE touted the success of shows like Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, and Extreme Rules, which this year were the most viewed events in the history of each show, as well as the success of September's Clash of the Castle. WWE also addressed their recent multi-year agreement with Foxtel Group that will expand their content distribution in Australia, and also said that the creation of NXT Europe has helped bring more interest into the company. It was also noted that WWE viewerships are up, and the company singled out the White Rabbit teases that led to the return of Bray Wyatt as a big reason for the improving figures. The past three months may have been the most unprecedented in WWE history, but that didn't stop the company making serious money, as the future is looking bright for Stephanie McMahon's company. Now in June, WWE launched a full investigation into Vince McMahon, who was alleged to have paid millions of dollars to former employees in non-disclosure agreements. The claims against Vince were enough to ultimately end McMahon's four decades on top of the wrestling world, but despite his retirement in July, the investigation has still been happening. 
WWE announced in its third quarter earnings report that the investigation is complete and the committee that had been looking into the matter has been disbanded. The investigation reportedly cost WWE a total of $19.4 million, more than the alleged payouts which McMahon has agreed to pay. McMahon may have ruled an empire, but his alleged non-disclosure payouts ended his time on top, and even now, months later, McMahon is still paying millions, but for a much different reason than before. WWE's next big money earner will come this Saturday at the Crown Jewel event in Riyadh, but there has been serious questions as to whether the show will go ahead. On Monday, it was reported that Saudi Arabia has told the US that they expect an imminent attack by Iran, and several other neighboring countries have also raised the level of alert for their military forces. Despite this, WWE is going ahead with Crown Jewel, which will take place in Riyadh, but the roster aren't exactly thrilled. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez discussed Crown Jewel, saying that there's usually trepidation ahead of a Saudi show by the talent, but there's even more this time. There was a lot of trepidation and normally the people going on the trip are trepidatious normally going in, but now you have this on top of everything else, so it appears that the show must go on and hopefully everything turns out alright. With this threat, there will be strict protocols in place in Riyadh to ensure the safety of WWE's talent and the crew at Crown Jewel, but for many on the roster, the sooner this show is over and they're back in the US of A, the better. We mentioned earlier how the investigation into Vince McMahon has come to an end, resulting in the former chairman paying close to $20 million to cover the costs. WWE has opted not to publicly disclose the result of the investigation into McMahon's alleged activities with female employees, but don't expect him back. Following the announcement, Fightful Select clarified that with the investigation over, McMahon won't be back, and that a spokesperson for WWE said that he was done done with the company. That same source added that McMahon would not be returning to the roles that were taken over by Triple H and several others. Another source said that despite concerns when McMahon retired, that this is no longer the case, with higher up in WWE saying morale has never been so high over the last decade. McMahon may still hold the majority of stock in the company and therefore a controlling interest, but don't expect Vincent Kennedy McMahon back in any official role in WWE. In April 2020, Zack Ryder was released from WWE, bringing his 15 years with the company to a surprising end. Since then, Ryder has become a huge name on the indies and an impact under his real name, Matt Cardona, but is the former superstar interested in a return? Speaking on the Not Sam Wrestling podcast, Cardona noted that several former superstars have come back and is open to the idea, but only if he kept his name. I would have a conversation. I'm not saying we haven't already. Who's to say who's to say? I think Zack Ryder is dead. Would it be cool? A woo-woo? Would that get a bigger pop maybe for one night as opposed to always ready? Maybe, but that's more familiar with the WWE universe and audience. But if I were to go back, I think it has to be as Matt Cardona. I'm so fortunate for that time as Zack Ryder. It has set me up. When I say WWE was my developmental, that's not a shot. It taught me how to have this run in all these promotions. It taught me how to do these interviews. It taught me how to be a superstar. So I'm forever grateful to WWE for that. Post WWE, Cardona has held titles across many promotions, including an impressive reign as NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. And if Cody Rhodes can return after the hokey Stardust character, there's still hope yet for the former Broski. And we're ending with WWE, as Triple H has made a ton of changes to the company over the past 100 days, and now another change has been made. Earlier this year, it was announced that this year's Survivor Series will focus on War Games, the iconic match from WCW and, more recently, NXT, but this year's matches won't be a one-off. During the 2023 third quarter earnings call, Triple H confirmed that the name of the November event will be Survivor Series War Games going forward, implying that this will be a recurring theme. Triple H has made several changes since his father-in-law's retirement, almost all of which have been welcomed by fans, and we imagine the addition of War Games to the long-term future of Survivor Series will be another idea that pays off for the King of Kings.